Hello, welcome to European Open Briefing for Friday, November the 23rd. I'm Rafa Boyajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be taking a look at what's happening in the currency markets today. We're seeing uh, some risk off uh, this uh, morning. We do have uh, rising doubts about whether or not the uh, planned meeting between President Trump and President Xi uh, next week at the G20 summit will uh, bring about uh, any substantial results in uh, easing the trade tensions between uh, the two countries. Uh, the dollar had come under pressure earlier today. Um, we do have uh, there are growing doubts about the strengths of the global economy uh, and that could lead to a uh, slower pace of rate hikes by the fed uh, we can see uh, the impact of that on dollar yen which has uh, been uh, struggling just below the 113 level over the past uh, few days dollar index though uh, is marginally higher at the moment mainly due to a drop uh, in the euro as we head into the european session we just had uh, the flash pmis out of the eurozone for france and germany which came in below expectations uh, initially the euro was holding uh, fairly firmly above the 1.14 level uh, so amid the budget row uh, and yesterday somewhat uh, Davish ECB minutes the euro uh, had been benefiting from uh, the uh, the Brexit deal between the UK uh, and the EU uh, and investors are also focusing mainly on the uh, the positive uh, the uh, positive statements coming out of the Italian government uh, the government so far uh, is signaling that they they are open uh, to uh, having talks with the European Commission uh, even though they're saying that they won't be making any changes to the core uh, uh, to the core uh, items uh, in the budget uh, so there's hopes that a resolution can be found uh, but uh, adding now uh, to the somewhat uh, more cautious ECB uh, we've got those weak PMIs that's pressuring the, the euro which has fallen by around 0.3 percent at the moment to around 1.1367 dollars uh, sterling also moving lower away from yesterday's highs we saw the pound jumping uh, higher yesterday after the EU and the UK uh, reached uh, an agreement on uh, the framework of a future uh, relationship uh, but there's doubts about whether or not this would get approved uh, in the UK uh, Parliament. Having a look at the risk sensitive, risk sensitive Australian dollar, it is uh, also lower against the US dollar at 0 0.7235. Uh, the Kiwi is also down by 0.2%, and the Luni is also uh, down by a similar amount at 1.3215 to the US dollar. Uh, as we're seeing a reversal uh, in uh, oil prices gains that we saw yesterday, uh, this morning, WTI uh, has uh, reversed down to fall by about 2.3 percent WTI at 53.35 dollars a barrel a very close uh, to those um, one-year uh, lows we saw earlier in the week gold uh, is uh, also down by no, around 0.4 uh, percent despite um, a fairly soft US uh, dollar having a look at the main performers we can see oil uh, clearly underperforming uh, followed uh, by a euro dollar and euro yen so we saw a big turnaround in the euro uh, following those PMI releases uh, and uh, dollar CAD is the best uh, performer so the the dollar index we can see has been edging lower over the past few days. We have seen a bit of a rebound in the euro uh, and sterling, though now we're seeing the euro uh, come under heavy uh, pressure again. Uh, so, uh, f receding expectations uh, about the number of rate hikes to be delivered by the Fed next year uh, has been somewhat pressuring the, the greenback, uh, but uh, we could see uh, the dollar struggling for direction until uh, next week when we're going to have uh, a speech by uh, J Fed Chairman Jerome Powell as well as of course next uh, weekend we've got that tr President Trump and President Xi's uh, meet plan meeting at the G20 summit so overall we're seeing mostly positive noise noises coming out of both countries those uh, markets are very wary as, a, as, as to whether or not uh, there's going to be uh, any significant de-escalation in 
uh, trade tensions uh, from that meeting. Uh, let's now turn to sterling. We can see that big jump yesterday when sterling rose by over 1% uh, after the UK and the EU managed to uh, reach a uh, draft text on the declaration on the future framework uh, relation uh, on the framework of a future relationship. Uh, but of course, uh, it's looking increasingly likely um, that uh, UK lawmakers will not vote uh, in favor of the, both the withdrawal agreement and uh, the future declaration. Uh, we've got a special summit coming up on Sunday. Uh, it's widely expected that EU leaders will endorse the deal. Uh, some doubts about whether or not Spain uh, will veto it at the last minute due to some disagreements over uh, Gibraltar. Uh, but assuming it goes ahead, uh, the next focus will move on to the parliament parliamentary vote which is expected sometime in mid-December. Uh, uh, and a quick look at the Canadian dollar. The Duluni had fallen to five months lows earlier in the week. Uh, it later uh, recovered a little bit uh, following a bit of a, a small re rebound in oil prices uh, but uh, could come under pressure uh, again uh, if that oil sell-off uh, continues. We've got uh, rising inventories in the US, uh, higher output by the major producers as well as the weakening demand uh, outlook. Uh, Brent crude hit a fresh nine months low uh, this morning. WTI is close to uh, the, the one year low, uh, but uh, immediate focus could uh, will likely fall on Canadian inflation and retail sales figures later today. If they're coming strong, perhaps they could provide a bit of a lift uh, for the loonie. Uh, and we're also going to have the flash PMIs out of the Eurozone coming up uh, very uh, shortly. Um, and of course, we just had the German and French ones, uh, which had a, a big impact on the Euro. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.